Hello everyone and welcome back to my reactions. Today we are checking out Vertigo, Alfred Hitchcock's 1958, I believe, apparently masterpiece. I've heard a lot about this movie, but at the same time, I know nothing about this movie. I've wanted to watch this movie for a long time. I know this is supposed to be one of the greatest movies of all time. I know this is supposed to be Hitchcock's best movie of all time in, in terms of, I don't know, a lot of people just say it is. Um, but I don't know anything about this movie at all. I know zero, and so I've just been trying to avoid everything. Not even, like, actively trying to avoid everything, but at the moment, like, I'm not going to read the summary. I don't know who's in this movie. I think the movie is made in 1958, but I'm not sure because I don't want to scroll down and accidentally spoil something about this movie because I want to go into this movie as blind as I possibly can. This is also the most requested Hitchcock movie that my channel has gotten. After I started with Rope and then I did Rear Window, this movie has been the most requested by everyone and I am just really, really excited to get into it. But before we get into it, let me do the lighting. Let me turn on the light and we can decide what color it should be. Boop! Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so I am gonna go orange today, and I'm going orange because the poster that YouTube has, I'm watching it on YouTube movies, the poster that YouTube has is blue with a guy hanging off of a, of a roof or something, I don't know what's happening in there, but I know that there is a very, very iconic poster of like the orange background and then this white swirly spiral and then like this shadow figure with a briefcase kind of going like ah if you know what i mean i'm pretty sure that that is for this movie so i'm gonna go in honor of that very iconic very memorable poster i'm gonna go orange i don't know if that fits the vibe or the aesthetic it definitely doesn't fit the vibe from outside outside is a very gloomy evening rainy cold freezing in fact and so uh and it doesn't fit my vibe but maybe it does fit the movie's vibe and if you'd like to check out more of my content you can head over to my patreon where i have uncut reactions to many of the movies i watch on youtube as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early there are also two exclusive patreon movies a month that you guys on patreon get to choose thank you so so much if you check it out now let's get back to the video okay i really don't have anything else to say or to add about this movie i actually know nothing at all i have no idea what the plot is all i know is from the poster is that there's a guy hanging off of a roof at some point so <laughs> i don't know let's just dive on into this thing i hope you enjoy my reaction to vertigo the music already sounds very mysterious and i love it james stewart oh i love that guy This is the most intense close-up I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I'm on edge right now. Vertigo, the lighting color to red, the music grrr, gets loud. Oh, it's so good. And here comes the spiral, like a black hole in your eyeball or something. Also, a lot of Hitchcock movies that I've been watching have taken place in one location. I wonder if this movie will take place in one location or take place in a lot of locations. Uh, the little piano is actually kind of unnerving and it's kind of going like -do 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 -do, like on my headphones like back and forth a little bit. Ah, ah, I don't like it. Is this going to be a scary movie guys? It feels like it's going to be a scary movie. Master of Suspense Hitchcock over here trying to scare me to death tonight. How did this man make so many good movies? How is he so talented? Oh my god, they're actually trying to kill him! This is so beautiful though. This already feels big in scope. No! Wait, that's the poster! The thing on the poster is literally the start of the movie! <laughs> He wasn't much help, was he? He just decided to die instead. Tomorrow, the corset comes off tomorrow. I'll be able to scratch myself like anybody else tomorrow. I'll throw this miserable <laughs> thing out. In the both this movie and Rear Window, he's at a cast. <laughs> he was going to be chief of police someday. I had to quit. Why? Well, it's because of this fear of heights I have, this acrophobia. Vertigo. The 
independent means, as the saying goes. Fairly independent. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you go away for a while? You mean to forget? Oh, no. She just wants you out of her house. <laughs> so, Brazier, you know about those things. You're a big boy now. <laughs> you run across one like that. <laughs> it's brand new. Revolutionary uplift. No sure. Revolutionary uplift? What? We were engaged once, though, were we? Three whole weeks. Yeah, good old college days. But you were the one that called off the engagement, you remember? I'm still available. <laughs> He's just lounging on the couch. I'm available, guys. I have a theory. I think if I can get used to heights just a little bit at a time, just a little like that, I do progressively, you see? I'll show you what I mean. That could work, actually. I think he ha he's on to something. We'll start with this. That? What do you want me to start with, the Golden Gate Bridge? <laughs> I see, I look up, I look down. I look up, I, I'm going right out and buy myself a nice tall stepladder. And take it easy now. All right, now here we go. Oh, no. Ah, well, this is a cinch. Here, I look up, I look down. I look up. I looked up. Oh, man. How did you get in the shipbuilding business, Gavin? I married into it. This isn't a, a very expensive looking office in a shipyard. Like all these. Yes, I should like to have lived here then. Color, excitement, power. Literally the only color in that picture is the color of sand. I asked you to come up here, Scotty, knowing that you'd quit detective work. But I wondered whether you'd go back on the job as a special favor to me. Whoa. A private detective? No, it's not that. We're very happily married. Well... Oh. Oh, no, dang it. Ah, may come to her. From home. Someone dead. Well, that's a lot to just say in one sentence. Someone dead. And enter and take possession of a living being. No. I didn't expect this from this movie at all. Then you're of no use to me. I'm sorry I wasted your time. Thanks for coming in, Scotty. Okay. No, please, please do this. Please do this. It sounds so interesting. A cloud comes into her eyes and they go blank. She's somewhere else. Away from me. Someone I don't know. Is this the woman at the start of the movie? Watched her coming out of the apartment. Someone I didn't know. She even walked a different way. That's very interesting. Have you talked to the doctors at all about that? Yes, but carefully. I want to know more before committing her to that kind of care. That is fair enough. This guy is speaking fairness. We're going to an opening of the opera tonight. We're dining at Ernie's first. You can see her there. Ernie's. He's Ernie's. That is my favorite restaurant. <laughs> Do you think Bert's is right next door? Bert's and Ernie's? <laughs> There's a lot of red in this movie. There is a lot of red. The red light on the lady at the start, who I'm assuming is this guy's wife, maybe? And then the red office, the red interior of this. A lot of red so far. I love how she's wearing this bright green to stand out against the red as well. It's a good costume choice. Everyone else is wearing these grays and blacks, but she's wearing this green. There she goes! She's very associated with the color green though. Green dress. Green car. It looks like she's even wearing green now as well, or at least a very subtle shade of green. I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous at the moment. What the heck? She went in through the back entrance? Why? What's she doing? Why did she have to go through the back? There's a door right there. Does she not know that? Is she blind? Again, look at all the greens around her though. The plants, the boxes. Every, the floor tiles even. Green, 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 green. Who 
Who are those flowers for? I hope they're for her husband. Okay, yeah, she's going to a grave. If, what if it's the person? If someone did take over her body, what if it's their own grave? That would be interesting. Smooth. Very smooth. I swear she must be blind. Are you kidding me? She has no peripheral vision at all. Carlotta Valdez died 1857. That was a while ago. That was like a hundred years ago. When this movie was made. When this movie was made, it was like a hundred years ago. Not I I'm not dumb. <laughs> Oh, oh, what the heck? Interesting. The plot thickens. That must be important. Oh my god, what the heck? Is that her? In the painting? Is she the girl in the painting? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I wonder if she is Carlotta now. He's like, dang it, I can't parallel park beside her. There's no room. <laughs> Wait, there was no room. There was no room. What the heck? Uh, she's in a hotel. I'm going to be honest, that hotel's a little creepy too on the outside. I would not want to be staying there. There's been almost no dialogue in the past... I don't know, 10 minutes? Oh, it's so good. Just the slow building tension of suspense. Of course, I don't think any of them would mind, really, but still, I... I am the law. <laughs> Spanish, you know? A lot of Yeah, that's it. <laughs> sweet name, isn't it? Foreign, but sweet. How long she had to run? She even uses the same name when she's become her ask questions you know as as long as they're well behaved but i must say I now, when she comes down don't say that i've been here oh but she hasn't been here today i just saw her come in what are you saying she hasn't been here at all well i would have seen her, you know what all the time putting olive oil on my rubber plant leaf what the heck there. who was he following what but it does seem silly thank you what? I am so confused now. She's some form of ghost? What? No, because other people saw her when she was in the museum. How was... What? There really is no one there. Her car is gone. And there's no car. car. Is this guy on drugs or something? Am I on drugs? I am so confused. But the flowers are there, so... At some point, what he was doing in the day was real, and at some point, something was not real. If I'm, I don't know. I'm not even going to try and make up a theory. I'm just going to watch. Who shot who in the Embarcadero in August 1879? Hey, wait a minute. You're not a detective anymore. What's going on? You know him well. He'll always be a detective. Hey, Johnny. What's it all about? She just okay. left. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish my drink. <laughs> By that man. And he took her and built for her the great house in the Western Addition. I want someone to do that for me. <laughs> he kept the child and threw her away. You know, a man could do that in those Look at the days. lighting in this situation as well, though. How bright the guy speaking is and how everyone else is a little bit more shadowed. Stopping people in the streets to ask, Where is my child? Oh. Have you seen my child? No, that's really sad. Now then, Johnny, oh, pay me. For what? Well, for bringing you. Pay me. <laughs> wow. Is she pretty? Carlotta? No, not Carlotta. Elster's wife. 
Yes, you can say yes. <laughs> yes, she is very pretty. I think I'll go take a look at that portrait. Goodbye. Madge. Goodbye. Madge, you... I like her a lot. I like her a lot. She's so fun. She inherited them. Never wore them. They were too old fashioned. Until now. And now she wears now them. She's alone. She uh, takes them out and looks at them. Interesting. Boy, I need this. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say she went insane, right? She didn't. They say didn't the guy say that a, her kid was chucked away? I feel like that would make anyone go insane. Is there gonna be a time where he's on top of the Golden Gate Bridge? Because he definitely foreshadowed that at the start of the movie. Then, what a shot, by the way, as well. Can I just say that? What a shot. It's so beautiful. What the heck? She just went for a swim. <laughs> it's like she's a dead body. <laughs> she's so limp. What is she saying? I want to know what Madeline's saying. Yes. Also, how did she get out of her clothes? Wasn't she unconscious? You better come over here by the fire where it's warm. Don't have any ideas, James Stewart. This is someone's wife. Yeah, he did, like a fisherman. You don't remember? No. Okay, so she's Madeline at the moment. Okay. The Legion of Honor, the art gallery. Oh yes, it's a lovely spot, isn't it? I've never been inside, but. Ah, uh, okay. She does not remember. I wouldn't have known you. Thank you. Oh, but I don't know you, and you don't know me. My name is Madeline Astor. My name's John Ferguson. Good strong name. <laughs> John Ferguson. And after what happened this afternoon, I should think maybe you'd call me Scotty. Maybe even John. Well, I prefer John. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna call you John as well, John. No. Well, it's the first time for me, too. Here, I'll get you some more coffee. Oh my god. That was such a deliberate hand on hand. Oh, John. Oh, John. Madeline is 26. Carlotta Valdez committed suicide when she was 26. Oh, interesting. Okay, the connections are still coming. Where'd she go? Do not let her. And the clothes? Wow, she got changed very quickly. Is she going somewhere different now? Is that why we're following her? Where's she going now? Oh, that's such a bad parking job. Oh man, John. Wait, that's his house. I didn't even realize that until just now. Oh yes, I do. The whole thing must have been so embarrassing for you. Not at all, I enjoyed it. I'm sure he did. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you did enjoy it. I hope we will too. What? Meet again sometime. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the last time. No. <laughs> no, I don't think that's necessarily true. Yeah, not true at all. Be right back. She gonna drive off? Okay. I was like, what if she just gases it into her verse? <laughs> True name is Sequoia Sempervirens. Always green, ever living. I don't like it. Why? Always green. 
ever living. She's always green. She's always wearing green and there's green always around her. Coincidence? I think not. There I died. It was only a moment for you. You, you took no She has been possessed. She must have. If she disappears right now, I'm going to freak out. She's just looking at the tree on the other side, you know? Just looking up at how beautiful it is. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. Nope, she's not gone. She was just standing behind the tree. Oh, I thought she was going to just disappear on me. Promise me something. Promise you won't ask me again. Please promise me that. Ask her again. He never promised. Just saying. Just saying John never promised. You know, the Chinese say that once you've saved a person's life, you're responsible for it forever. So I'm committed. That's a cool saying. I like that saying. Except once. Yesterday. And you didn't know. You didn't know what happened until you found yourself with me. So she made it to the darkness yesterday. That's interesting. There's a way to explain, did you see? If I'm mad. That would explain it, wouldn't it? No, don't let her run! I told you not to let her get close to the water. You should have listened to me, John. Here. I've got you. I'm so afraid. Oh my god, I was like, this is a kiss cam. The wave exploded behind them, and I was like, of course, of course, John, man. This is someone's wife. But also I wanted them to kiss because I really like them together. Their chemistry is really good and the tension between them has just been like through the roof sexual tension the entire movie. But at the same time, she's still married. Where do you go these days? Mm, just wandering. Make it out with someone's wife. What have you been doing? Wandering. That's so vague, John. That's so vague. It's such a good painting. No. Let's make that movie some other night. That was a little too close though. It is is she did the same painting as the uh, portrait, right, in the museum? What's the matter? What? I, I should have phoned you, but I... Why did the music get all scary when she was at the door? That scared me a little bit. No, never. Madeline, a hundred miles south of San Francisco, there's an old Spanish mission. San Juan Batista, it's called. Yeah, yeah. And it'll finish your dream. It'll destroy it. I promise you. All right. All right. Let's do it. It's so beautiful, though. Like this old architecture. Maybe a little crumbly, but that's just because it's old. It is very beautiful. Ah, she's at the town in her dreams, which she's been to before, apparently. There were not so many carriages then. It was a hundred years ago. The actress who's playing Madeline is doing such a superb job. Kiss me, darling. Kiss me. <laughs> I love you, Madeline. I love you too. What? Why do you love her? Love what? You barely know this lady. Calm down. To happen this way, it shouldn't have happened. But it had to happen. We're in love. That's all that counts. Look, let me go, please. Now, listen let me go. Me. Listen. To it wasn't supposed to happen this way. Interesting. Oh, she's gonna go to the roof, isn't she? Oh no, but then his vertigo is going to kick in. What's happening? Don't look down. Oh, what are those cool camera movements? I also have a fear of heights, so that's scary. I can understand his pain. I don't have like a vertigo or anything like that, but I do have a fear of heights.
What? What? No. She literally just jumped off of there so fast. I thought for sure he was going to save her. What? Is he going to blame himself now because he couldn't save her because of his vertigo? What the heck? This framing too and you can just see her body and then you can see him coming out. Oh, that's good framing. Oh my god, seeing her, it's like hearing the scream and then seeing her body pa fly past the window. Insanity, man. What the heck is gonna even happen in this movie now? I don't even know how long's left. Before, under similar circumstances, Mr. Ferguson allowed a police colleague to fall to his death, Captain Hanson. He didn't allow him? How was he supposed to save that guy? He just fell off the roof himself. That has nothing to do with your verdict. It is a matter between him and his own conscience. Okay, then why did you say it then, huh? If it has nothing to do with this case at all. I'm still... There's still loose ends on, though. Scotty, let's get out of here. This movie can't just be over. Soon. Like, I'm not gonna check how long's left of this movie, but... I still don't know how she just disappeared in that hotel closer to the start of the film. I... I need to know. Maybe they've said it and I missed it, but I feel like they have not. Blue light? What's the blue light for? Purple now? Is it gonna turn red? Purple? Oh, it's very blue. What the heck is happening? Now there's like some cool animation going on. That's awesome. Ah! Ah! She's creepy, I don't like her, go away. The background behind him just popping in, that was cool. It's been undug. Oh, is he having the same dreams? He's having the same dreams, I think. Maybe. He had like the same visions as Madeline was having, it feels like. I wonder what would happen if somebody got their files mixed up. He's not himself. Look at him. He's just sitting silently. He's he's in his own world like Madeline was. I can give you one thing. He was in love with her. Oh, that does complicate the problem, doesn't it? <laughs> love always complicates the problem. Hello? Hello? That's not her, is it? That's just some old lady. Him and his wife, the poor thing. I didn't know her. Tell me, is it true that she really... I'm, I'm sorry. Why would you ask that question if you think he, he knew her? Why would you ask that? You're so insensitive. I'm interested in that jewel that I was on that girl's neck. They really, like, Hitchcock focused on that jewel, the red... A jewel on the necklace. What the heck is happening, man? It's like different people who look just like her scouting around. Is it just because he's feeling this loss and he's just coping with it by seeing her in other people? And the green, because she always wore green, man. She's there this time, though. Why? Because you remind me of somebody. I heard that one before, too. <laughs> and you saw me and something clicked. Hmm. Oh, you're not far wrong. Well, it's not She's not far wrong, but there are some details that are off. Do I really look like her? <laughs> Interesting how she's warming up, though. I decided I'd see what it's like in sunny California. I've been here three years. Honest. I didn't get a good enough look at those pictures. I don't know if important information was on them or not. That was such a weird experience for her as well. What the heck? Oh, look at her eyes though. Her eyes are like a green brown. 
So interesting. What the heck? 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 What the heck is happening? Did she see that? What the heck? Dak, what? She faked her death? No, that. Is that actually her? Oh, wait. No, is that actually her? No, is that actually her? No, she didn't. Did she just dye her hair? Put some makeup on that's different? It's amazing how much makeup and different hair changes with the way a person looks because if this is the same actress, I did not recognize her. And so you found me. It is her! That I dreaded and hoped for. It so is I her! It. The twist, man! What the heck is happening? I made the mistake, I fell in love. That wasn't part of the plan. It wasn't supposed to be like this, that's what she said at the bottom of the stairs. Oh my god. How awesome is this movie, man? How awesome is this movie? How awesome is this twist? She's still alive. For him, it must be like... You look exactly the same. Right? So strange. It must be so strange. Look at the lights. They're green. She always wears green. Oh, I understand, all right. I've been understanding since I was 17. And the next step is... No, no, no. Look at this lighting, guys. Oh, my God. I guess I, I could phone the store in the morning and... Some excuse. Yes, please, Judy. No, not for me. It's not it. Nothing like it. <laughs> Gentleman seems to know what he wants. All right, we'll find it. She knows. It's the one in her closet, hey? You're looking for the suit that she wore for me. You want me to be dressed like her? Judy, I just want you to look nice. I know the kind of... No. It is weird that he's doing this, though. I certainly do know what you want, sir. I'll see what we have. I feel so bad for her, though. Because it is her. It's definitely her. It's just... I forget why she's pretending, though. Am I... Oh, I forget why she's pretending. Why is she pretending to not know him? Judy, please, it can't matter to you. Oh, I thought it was becoming undyed to a blonde. How would it not matter? It's literally her hair. That that really matters. Hair. Oh yes, it's an easy color. And all the rest of the. Yes, sir. We know what you want. Thank you. I hate that he's that he is the one transforming her. You know, it's like she just did not have a choice in this. What's he thinking about? What's on his mind? Is he going to check her closet or something? It looks just like her. Again, look, the green light on the door. The green light on the door, but not on him. Ah, you, the lighting is so good. Oh, she's in like this glow. She's this angelic glow. Oh. This is a really cool camera shot. Uh, the, 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 the room. Hello? The room just changed. They're at the carriages again. What the heck is happening? Did that happen because if it just felt like there that it just felt like her again, you know, like when they were kissing before. Hello, my love. Like me? Mm -hmm. Is that the best you can do? Yeah. He just went, mm-hmm. <laughs> 
was not enthusiastic. I'm gonna have... I'm gonna have one of those big beautiful steaks. Let me see. Oh! The necklace! The necklace! The necklace! The necklace! I'm just about ready. All I've gotta do is find my lipstick. Yep, 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 yes sir. We're going awfully far. Well, I just feel like driving. Okay, but she said she was hungry. One final thing I have to do. What? And then I'll be free of the past. Let the past die? How? What? How? Why? How? Okay, so they're going back here. I like it. I like it. I also like this blue filter so that they're shooting in the day ish and it makes it look like it's night. Go. I'd rather wait. Oh, I need you. Why? I need you to be Madeline for a while. I'm gonna push you off. And then I heard footsteps on the stairs. She was running up the tower. Right here. I see she was running. Oh my god, I have in so much suspense right now. What is he doing? I'm rooting for John to be able to do it, but also John's character is like riding the line between I like him and I don't like him. It's very strange. You remember? The necklace, Madeline. That was the slip. I remember the necklace. That was the slip. I made you over just like I made you over. Only better. Not only the clothes and the hair, but the looks and the manner and the words. You know what to say? You were very apt pupil too, weren't you? You were oh. very apt pupil. Uh. I was the setup. He kind of has the right to be angry though, not gonna lie. She's basically being dragged. Oh my god, you could have thrown her out the window. You shouldn't have been. You shouldn't have been that sentimental. Oh, I told oh, this is so good. I walked into danger, let you change me because I loved you and I wanted you. Scotty. You literally helped kill someone. No. Who? God have mercy. What? The heck is happening? Madeline just threw herself off of the building. It's done. It's over. That's how it ends. Are you actually kidding me right now, Hitchcock? That's how it ends. It just ends with her actually dying. The nun. What the heck is just, what the heck is actually happening? And that was my reaction to Vertigo, the 1958 thriller mystery starring Kim Novak, James Stewart, Barbara Bell, Geddes, Geddes, I think that's how you say her last name, Tom Helmore, and Henry Jones. That movie was so good, but the ending had me like, what the heck is happening? I cannot believe the ending to this movie. She just falls off. Originally, I thought that she jumped off. Like, she saw the nun, and she just went, see you later, James Stewart, and she just jumped herself off of the tower. But I think that she got scared, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I think that she got scared, and she slipped off. I'm not sure though, we'll have to rewatch this movie, we'll definitely, not even just for the ending, but we'll definitely have to rewatch this movie for some other things, because there were some things that I am a little bit confused about, which I'm going to get to first before I get into anything else, just because I'd like to clear it up, I guess. I am confused about the hotel scene at the start of the movie, when James Stewart's character, John, drives behind her, Madeline Parks at the hotel. She goes in the hotel, but when John goes into the hotel, the lady's like, she's not here. They go up to her room. She's not there. The car is gone. How did she disappear? Because if she was there, the lady would have been like, oh, she just left, you know? So she never went to the hotel, I don't think, unless I'm missing something. I'm just very confused about that whole sequence. It was like she disappeared, and then for like the whole movie, I thought she was some ghost, and then 
she turned out to be a real person and then it, the murder thing happened and man the murder thing was so cool which I'll get to in a bit but that is the thing I think I'm the most confused about and then also her dying at the end of the movie her death how did she fall off was it jumping off did she intentionally jump off or did she fall off through fear of the nun through being scared because I can see it happening both ways because James Stewart I don't think was going to love her again. I don't think John was going to love her again. She had kind of betrayed his trust. She had deceived him. She would lied to him. All of these things she wanted to love him, but she had to be this different person at that point for him to start loving him. And then she let him change her through his, his, I don't know, his horrible sense of I need her back in my life. So she let her change her back into Madeline from this Judy lady that she was pretending to be. And then that, I guess in that way, is deceiving John. And so I don't think John was ever going to love her. And so I can see her jumping off because there was nothing really left in this world. She murdered someone or she helped murder someone. But then the person that she helped murder someone with left her because he was rich or something. I don't know the specifics of that, but it's something like that. And then James Stewart's character, John, is also going to leave her. So what is left for her, you know? So maybe that's maybe she jumped, but maybe she just got scared of the nun. I would be scared too of a nun just walking up on me, making out with someone. <laughs> like that would scare me too. Getting into the reviews of this movie very, very quickly. And before I get into the reviews, I would like to say that I'm very glad I did not read the description for this movie. Let me just read you the description on Google, which is the description that I probably would have read before starting this movie. Detective Scotty, who suffers from ar ar acrophobia, I'm sorry, I just totally messed up that word, is hired to investigate the strange activities of an old friend's wife. She commits suicide while Scotty becomes dangerously obsessed with her. They literally spoil the movie in the summary. Her death, her death, her suicide at the start of the, uh, halfway through the movie is a big twist in my opinion that is a big twist i didn't expect her to die i didn't think that was going to happen and then scotty becoming obsessed with her changing judy back into madeline is another twist in the movie it is this kind of really gross but sad and pitying twist that this movie has this movie takes but her death, Madeline's suicide in this movie, suicide, pretending to die, was a twist and they spoiled it. So I'm a little mad at Google for anyone who was wanting to know what this movie was about and reading this. They just got one of these twists spoiled for them. So I am sorry if, if anyone read that. I, that, is, that is a horrible summary. But anyways, 8.3 on IMDb is the audience score, 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Generally speaking, everyone likes this movie. Uh, out of all the Hitchcock movies I've seen, I don't know if I'd say that this one is my favorite one. I think I, like, I can really appreciate this one. This one is still an amazing movie, but I think that I liked Rear Window more than this one. I think this one may be my second favorite or maybe third favorite. I really liked Rope as well. I really did like Rope as well, so maybe it's my third favorite, but I think Rear Window is still my favorite. But this movie was still beautiful. There are so many good sequences, so many good scenes. The twists were amazing, especially the twist that she murdered, that she was in on it and she was still alive. I cannot believe I did not notice that she was still alive. That just comes to show how much makeup and how much just a different hair color can change the way someone's appearance is. Like, yes, you have the same face shape, but she was in that movie for probably like 10 minutes as Judy and I did not recognize her as Madeline. I was just looking at her going, she looks sort of familiar, I guess, but not that familiar. But then once, oh, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe that I didn't notice. And I don't know if I was just being dumb or if a lot of people never notices it's Madeline until it's revealed. But I felt so dumb. It, but then also I was like, this movie is genius at the same time with that twist. Ah, oh, the twist was so good. But the thing I want to talk about the most, well, I'm going to talk about the music quickly, but then I'm going to talk about the color of this movie because that is the thing I want to talk about the mo most. But the music of this movie was really good. It was very suspenseful. It had me on edge. It was 
very quiet, but then there were some very loud moments, and the loud moments give me chills. There's this moment where Judy, or I guess Madeline, comes out of the bathroom with the, I don't, I don't think she has the necklace on, but she she just did up her hair, and John turns around to see her, and she's glowing with this green light, the green light that is always in this movie. There's always some form of green, I'll get to that in a second, but she's glowing with this green light, and the music swells, and then they go and embrace, and they kiss, and I got chills at that point, and I think that was because of the music. It was also because it was such a good scene, and it was definitely John seeing her as Madeline for the first time, this thing that she's, he's just been obsessing with. But at the same time, the music was just so beautiful. The music was very beautiful, but it was also, there are definitely moments of suspense in this film, and that had a lot to do with the music as well as the limited dialogue in certain situations. Speaking of the color, though, the color was so cool in this movie and I don't know if they meant to do this or not. I feel like they did. I, I definitely feel like they did, but they definitely associated Madeline with the color green, which is what I found very interesting. She was wearing green when we first saw her. Her car was green. She would always like be around something that's green. There was always something green most of the times around her. And then when she's in her room pretending to be Judy, She's one, she's wearing green, which is already a hint that it is Madeline, which is really interesting now that I think about it. And two, then the next time we see her in there, she's not wearing green, but the light outside of her place is green. It was red before and she was wearing green and then it turns green. And then from then on, it's like whenever James Stewart's character is in the room, he is a little bit illuminated by green light, but Madeline is always I feel like illuminated by this green light. There's a shot where James Stewart is standing on the left of the screen and Madeline is standing on the right of the screen and the bat like right beside the bathroom door and the bathroom door is like beautifully lit with this green light and she is just standing in this green light and he is off to the side only barely lit by this green light and it's this huge it's this beautiful contrast between like this is actually her and like this is actually her and the movie is telling you it's her with this lighting because even though we, we knew it was her by that point but the movie is still telling you that it's her and is trying to signify to John that it is her using this light and I loved the way that the lighting worked in this movie and the lighting in general was just beautiful there was so much color in it but at the same time there were a lot of grays in this movie there were there were a lot of grays and I found that interesting because the important things always were the things that stood out in color and I also find it interesting interesting that the color red was used as this big signifying thing of that this was Madeline when Madeline's color was green the entire movie. That is something that I also thought was interesting how the necklace, the thing that John finds out and makes him believe that this is Madeline, makes him actually understand that this is Madeline, Madeline didn't actually commit suicide, was the color red. Even though throughout the movie, everything that has been signifying that this character is Madeline has been green. So I found that really, really interesting. I don't really have any other thoughts on that at the moment. It's just something that I saw and I was like, that is really interesting that the color red was the thing that he used to distinguish Madeline from Judy, but the audience used the color green as well as her exposition, obviously, to understand that that was Madeline, that Judy was Madeline. So that is something that is very interesting that I just noticed. Another thing that I thought was really interesting in this movie was James Stewart's, John's obsession with... Madeline and when he lost her that obsession turned into this really disturbing look at grief in my opinion and it made me not like him it was really weird because I really liked him up to that point I really liked John up to that point and then he started to become this like this really kind of icky person to kind of be around to just listen to he was commanding, not even asking, commanding Judy to do these things, to dress up like this, to dress up like this. Don't be yourself. Be this person that I love, that I used to love. I don't love you. I love that you look like the person that I used to love. Like all of these things, it made me not like him. But then at the same time, it was Madeline. So it was really weird. But just like the, the idea that someone is so grief stricken and so at a loss 
in life at this moment in time that they will forcibly change someone else to suit their own needs even if it's against their will was this very disturbing concept for me but also a concept that i can see actually happening in the real world which is why i think it was so effective there's also one thing that i am also confused about sided with something that i thought the movie maybe could have improved upon a little bit so I am confused about this animation. There was an animation near, I don't know, whenever Madeline committed suicide the first time and John is sleeping in the bed and then there's this like 2D animation, the flowers on the roof and then they kind of break apart into the petals and stuff like that. I don't really understand why that was in the movie. Maybe I just need to watch the movie a second time and I'll understand that, but I don't really understand why that was in the movie. And then the thing that I thought this movie could have done a little bit better was the first half an hour of the movie felt a little slow. The second half of the movie was really good. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it, like five out of five stars. But the first 30 minutes of the movie felt a little slow because it was just James Stewart's character, John, driving around behind Madeline, no dialogue. And yes, it did build up this tension, this mystery behind Madeline as a person, as a character. Like, what is she doing? What is she up to? Why is she going to all these locations? But at the same time, all the all it was was just driving, waiting, driving, waiting. You know, it was like it was just the same thing over and over and over again. And it worked for a while, but then eventually it was like, oh, we're doing more driving. Why are we doing more driving? Like, what the heck? So there, I think they could have maybe cut that up a little bit to make it a little bit faster. But that is my only kind of big issue with this entire movie. Like the things that I don't understand, it probably makes sense in the context of the film. And this is, I like, I just probably just need to watch this movie again or need someone to explain it to me so that I'm like, oh yeah, I understand why this animation was in the movie or I understand why she was basically a ghost and disappeared from the hotel at the start of the movie, you know? Getting into the cast now, I'm just gonna do Barbara Bell as Midge, James Stewart as John, and Kim Novak as Madeline. Kim Novak, is she related to BJ Novak at all, like the guy from The Office? That is a question that I was wondering, but I just never asked during my reaction. Anyways, Barbara Bell Geddes, Geddes, Geddes as Midge. Midge was such an interesting character in this movie. She was a very interesting character in this movie because she, I feel like she loved John. I feel like she loved John. There was a close-up at the start of the movie where John was like, oh, you, I, you, you were engaged to me before, remember? And then you broke up like three weeks after. And then there was this close-up of her and there were these two close-ups. One of them, she said something. The other one, she never said anything. But it was just like this reaction. And you could kind of get the sense that she still had feelings for him in a way. She made that painting as well, the one that she thought would be kind of funny, the one that she wanted uh, John to have. She was a very interesting character, one that I think you could do a lot of deep diving on, one that I don't have time in this review to do deep dive on, but and I just don't have enough information. I've only seen this movie once, and it's still flying through my mind as I finished it like five minutes, I don't know, it's been 15 minutes, I guess, like 15 minutes ago, but she was a very interesting character, but I thought that Barbara did an amazing job as his character, and it's a character that I like to kind of read up on a little bit to kind of understand the more significant meaning of her in this film. James Stewart as John. He was amazing in this movie. He is an amazing actor. I loved him the first half, hated him the second half because of the way he was obsessing over Madeline and turning someone else who looked like Madeline into Madeline and I did not like that. I was like, this is really, really weird. You were walking a very fine line here, Mr. James Stewart. But overall, he was an amazing character. I loved him. The end, just the shock face when Madeline actually falls was insane. But also his realization was so good and then taking her to the tower and slowly revealing to her that he knew it was her. So good, so good, so good. I thought he did an amazing job. And finally, Kim Novak as Madeline. She was awesome in this movie. I did not expect her to be this awesome. She was such a good actor. Never heard of her before. Don't know if she's super famous or not famous except for this movie, but her chemistry of John was uh, James Stewart was amazing. There was always this sexual tension, especially in the first half of this movie. It's this, like sexual tension that lingered with every single word that made you want them to be together, even though you thought that Madeline was married to Gavin. 
it was just it was so good and then the second half of the movie when she's pretending to be judy but actually madeline and this kind of struggle she has of not wanting to change from judy to madeline but also changing because she also wants to change and she's allowing it but she has to pretend that she doesn't want it but at the same time she maybe doesn't want i don't know it was just there was so many emotions in that scene so many feelings and so so much just everything and she did such an amazing job i thought kim novak did great and that is my review and reaction to vertigo thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel it really does mean a lot i think the next hitchcock movie i'm doing is the birds and that is a movie that i'm very excited to watch it is one of my most recommended hitchcock movies as well but vertigo is definitely the most okay thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time for my next movie reaction